So I have a Google search for the term vegan. I get a little email every day from Google with a bunch of different headlines that contain the word vegan, basically. Just recently, I saw a headline, something to the effect of pregnancy tests are not vegan or are pregnancy tests vegan, which is something that I had never heard, never thought of, even as someone who's been vegan for 12 plus years. I had never asked myself, are pregnancy tests vegan? So I did some Googling and sure enough, pregnancy tests are not vegan. And it doesn't matter if you're talking about the expensive digital tests that give you the little, like it actually says pregnant or the, the first response early testing ones or the cheapest ones you can buy that don't have the plastic encasement that you can get on Amazon. I think you can get like 50 tests for 10 bucks. It's just the strips. All of them are a result of animal testing, ongoing animal testing. The way they work is essentially via monoclonal antibodies and you get these antibodies via, it looks like mice most of the time. And it's not like there is a, a reservoir of monoclonal antibodies that were acquired like decades ago. No, again, this is ongoing animal testing. Mice are continually being tested on and inevitably killed. And it looks like the testing, which goes on for weeks before they are killed, is not very pleasant. As this resource says, if the animal is in too much pain, too much discomfort, then they should be terminated, which I assume the fact they say that in the first place suggests that this does happen at least some of the time. I will say it was interesting trying to find this information out because if you search pregnancy tests vegan, you get a lot of like vegan sites, right? Saying that they're not vegan, um, sometimes saying that, you know, they're, they're tested on or they come from mice or something, but there's no links to anything. It's very um, non-specific. So then when I Google like pregnancy tests, how are they made, right? Not how they work, but how they're made. You still get just a bunch of stuff that's like, how does a pregnancy work? And they don't say anything about how they're actually made. I found this one link that was supposedly all about the manufacturer, but they don't really mention the source of the antibodies. It's just like monoclonal antibodies. That's it. I don't know if that is a kind of just a uh, non-curious kind of thing. It's just like, yeah, who, who cares where they come from? Or it's like, let's not talk about where they come from. <laughs> because they'll specifically talk about the origins of the pregnancy tests, which is very interesting. I suggest reading up on it to see. I, I mean, initially they would take urine from a pregnant woman and inject that into a mouse and it would actually lead to their ovaries developing. They would inject it into a, a uh, immature female mouse. The HCG in the pregnant woman's urine acts as like a really intense luteinizing hormone. Then they would inject into, I think they switched to rabbits and then they switched to frogs because they could use the eggs directly. So it's been a whole process and and you'll, you'll often see that mentioned where they talk about animals specifically I, because it was in the past seemingly, but then when they talk about modern day, it's just eh, monoclonal antibodies. You don't need to know. So I had to make my search more specific, right? I had to search like pregnancy tests, mice antibodies, stuff like that. And then I was able to find more specific mentions of how they were actually developed. I think eventually I just searched monoclonal antibodies, mouse, I found this little infographic. One source says that they use mice, but they also use goat, I believe for the control in the test. And once again, this is ongoing testing, much like, much like a flu vaccine, right? That uses chicken eggs. Um, they are constantly using mice and killing them. And to my knowledge, there are no pregnancy tests that are vegan. There is this one, LIA, L-I-A, that is supposedly biodegradable, so it doesn't have the plastic encasement, and I believe how the actual strips are made uh, is maybe compostable. <laughs> it's not made from, like, rayon or whatever the uh, traditional ones are made from. But again, you can get just the strips on Amazon that don't have the plastic encasement, which is the, the big part, the most wasteful part. So I don't know. I don't know how expensive these things are. It seems like they're not selling them right now. Point is, they're still not vegan. They still contain monoclonal antibodies from mice. 
I'm sure this will change sometime in the possibly near future. As far back as 1999, the National Research Council was encouraging further development of in vitro methods of tissue culture methods as a replacement for using live animals, as they say, to avoid or minimize pain and suffering by the animals. And they specifically talk about the ascites method, which you can see here. It's a buildup of fluid in the abdomen, likely very painful. In 2020, the EU basically called for an end to uh, animal-based monoclonal antibodies, saying that the science is there, that we can move forward with non-animal-based. Recent correspondence to Nature and Nature Methods claims that non-animal antibodies are ready to replace animal-derived ones in all known applications. These scientists are saying, no, we're not quite there yet. While we are committed to replacing animal experimentation with alternative methods, these methods need further scientific validation to justify replacing the use of animals without affecting the desired outcome of the experiment. They cite insufficient technological development, inconsistent efficiency depending on the application, and difficulty in implementation at a global scale. The last one, I think, is a... Uh, that doesn't bear much wait because anything initially is probably going to be difficult to implement at a global scale, right? That doesn't mean you don't try. They also have this section where they say that, eh, you know, it doesn't really re require that much animal exploitation. Of course, they don't use the term animal exploitation, but they say that hybridoma generation only requires animals during the immunization phase, but that the rest of the steps are animal-free. Protocols for immunization have been improved to maximize animal welfare, better adjuvants with fewer secondary effects, reduced number of immunizations, and improved routes of immunization. That that's great, but at the end of the day, you're using mice and then killing them. And it's the same for ovulation tests. They also use monoclonal antibodies. Now, I'm not making this video to shame anyone or to say don't ever use pregnancy tests ever or you're not vegan. And in fact, virtually, and in fact, all of the sources I saw, vegan sources talking about pregnancy tests said that, hey, there are certain non-vegan things in life that we, you know, still need to use and uh, they're not like shamey at all, which I really appreciate. More so, I just wanted to, again, bring to light how many things involve animal exploitation. And even for someone who's been vegan over a decade, there's stuff that you miss. Neither me or partner, who's also been vegan longer than I have, ever thought about pregnancy tests. And I have taken a number of pregnancy tests. Not one of us went, hey, wait a minute. How, how are these made? That's why when I read the headline, I was like, there's no way because partner would have thought of that. He would have said something. And then I mentioned it to him. He was like, what? Point is, if I can make a mistake like that, I, I mean, anyone can. It's Veganuary right now. So, you know, those of you who are new to vegan and probably are going to make a lot of mistakes and not realize things are vegan or forget to look at labels, I, we all do it. Don't worry about it. Now, would I have changed my practice with my two pregnancies? Would I have not taken pregnancy tests? No, I still would have taken pregnancy tests, but I would not have taken uh, nearly as many as I did. <laughs> now, luckily with both, I got pregnant uh, very quickly within one cycle, but still I started taking them early. So if I were to do it again, I would not take the early tests or I would, you know, they have the first response and a couple others where you can test up to six days before your missed period. I would not have done that. I would have waited until at least the day after uh, my expected period start date um, to take a test as a way to minimize the amount of tests that I would take. And this is good practice anyway, even if you don't care about mice. The problem with testing so early is that you run the risk of getting a positive result because the egg was fertilized, ends up not being viable and rejected. And so you get that positive and then a few days later the test is negative. In fact, you can see tons of reviews on like the first response, the six day early tests, where people say the tests are broken, they don't work because that's what happened. They got a positive and then a few days later they got a negative. 
No, it's it's more likely that they registered a miscarriage. It's very, very common to miscarry that early in the pregnancy. Normally, we just don't know about it because it's so early. So regardless of animal welfare, it definitely makes sense to test no earlier than day after your period, really ideally like a week after your expected period start date. Don't do that to yourself, right? Like don't, <laughs> if you're trying to get pregnant and you think you're pregnant and then you're not, I mean, oh my God, don't do that to yourself. But I would love to know if there are any, you know, vegan moms out there or those of you who've tried to get pregnant who knew that they weren't vegan and just don't take them. Maybe you just try to get pregnant and wait until... I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it seems like a waste of resources to wait until what you think you're eight weeks and make a doctor's appointment and go in and get the blood test. If I had to guess, I would guess the type of vegan pregnant women who don't test at all don't go to the doctor either. So you just maybe what wait until you start to show. <laughs> Maybe don't do that. So again, not here to make anyone feel bad or to make veganism seem even more like a Jesus. We can't do anything. We can't even have a damn pregnancy test without feeling guilty. It's just one of those things. We live in a in a non-vegan world. There's going to be stuff that we just kind of have to accept some of the time. And be positive and optimistic that one day this won't be the case. I have no doubt that one day all pregnancy tests will be vegan. I know I said like I'm not, don't, <laughs> not trying to shame anyone, but part of me does feel kind of a little disappointed in myself, I guess, just that I was so not curious about how they're made. It's not even necessarily a vegan thing. It's just often I do think about certainly what I eat and what I use and how it's made and how it's contained or what it contains. And um, I, it's just very, it's very interesting to me that when it came to pregnancy tests, I just... I just didn't at all. I didn't once think about it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, give it a like. If you want to subscribe, of course, do so. If you want to be notified when I upload videos, click the bell. And there goes my camera. Perfect timing. Uh, Patreon. Thank you so much to patrons over at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan for support dang it for supporting the channel. And I will have a new video very soon.